time to get dirty. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and part 8 of the Tamiya 135th scale Panzer II in US capture markings. In part 7 uh, I got the primer. The construction was done so I got the primer, uh, the base coat which was uh, Panzer Gray, hairspray, then the top coat, chipping, little bit of uh, airbrush to fuzz out the edges on some of the uh, transition between the top coat and the gray coat and the decals. I also got the tracks completed and I got those painted off camera but those are ready to go and uh, if you want to see more information on the tracks I have a separate video for that <clears throat> I'll try and remember to add a link at the end so you can check that out if you want. So in this video, the first thing I want to start with is doing the uh, weathering, which is basically basically going to be applying uh, mud and dust underneath the lower edge of the hull here, underneath the fenders, so I can get the running gear and the tracks installed. In looking at my reference photos, as you can see here, um, there is a lot of mud and grub going on. So that's how I'm going to be doing down underneath here. And uh, to do that, I'm going to be using pigment powders. For the first one I'm going to use, I'm going to use Desert Dust. And... Um, then I will apply some darker colors and maybe lighter colors again over that. And mainly it will be uh, Vallejo, but I'm probably using the Ammo by MIG as well. I've got some light dust and some other colors in that. I want to get it towards kind of not just one even color. And to create what I'm going to try and accomplish here, which is some textured yet dried mud, I'm going to be using Pigment Binder. This one here is by Vallejo. Now the difference between binder and pigment fixer is a pigment fixer is more of a just liquid. And a lot of people use different things for uh, pigment fixers. Some use dedicated pigment fixers like this by Amble by MIG. Uh, people use alcohol or odorless mineral spirits. There's all kinds of different things that people use. Now the reason I'm not using this is because I can't get the volume that I want using the uh, pigments unless I use this pigment binder which is more like almost a dissolved PVA. I've got a small dropper bottle of it here that I'm going to be using but it's thicker and it is much more durable than just using a pigment fixer. Pig pigment fixer if you rub on it, mess around with it, you can rub it completely off. It'll leave a film of the color from the pigments, but you can destroy any texture you might have. So this ensures that I maintain the texture. That way, if I bump it during installation of all the running gear components, I won't destroy anything in the process. So I'm going to get this stuff ready, show you how I mix it up and apply it, and then I'll get to work. The first thing I do now I've got <clears throat> some of these, these are really inexpensive brush sets that I get at uh, a big box hobby retailer in the States called Hobby Lobby. And you can buy a set of these particular brushes. I have no idea what the bristles are made out of or, any, or anything. They're some kind of uh, synthetic nylon or something. But they're really good for doing this kind of type of stuff because they're so cheap. If you ruin them, it's no big deal. But even though they are cheap, they seem to last a long time. I've had these for a very long time. And I mark them. This one I scratched to pee for pigments. Wrote mud on it so I know this is the one that I like to use for mixing up mud and stuff like that. So what I do is I get some of the pigment here. And I put it in some kind of container. In this case I'm using this here uh, 
paint palette. Then, using my pigment binder, I just drop a few drops in there. No science, no ratios, nothing like that. So if you're a ratio person, can't help you. You'll have to just monkey around with it and get it to the consistency you want. Okay, so this. Well, this isn't very much, but I'll have to mix up a bigger batch. But this kind of gives you an idea. This is a little bit thin for what I want. So, there we go. See, it's a it's a more of a paste. I don't like working in too big of a batch because I don't want it to dry out. But you can see here that it's more of a. more of a paste type consistency and then it's as simple as just stippling it on there like this hopefully you can see it gives a nice texture you don't have to be real gentle with it because I want it to be a good build up really jam it down into the nooks and crannies because I don't want any of the actual paint color showing through. What I'm going to do here is I'm not going to get the muddy stuff all the way up top. I mean if some of it gets up there that's fine because I want some uneven evenness to it but I'm going to be using some dry stuff later so another trick to remember if you want to try this method and again this is the way I do it so there, there may be a lot of other ways people do it and that's fine because 10 by 10 rule 10 different people 10 different ways I'm going to be using some dry stuff up a little bit higher. But what you want to do is you want to stipple it on there. You don't want to... <clears throat> well, in, in this case, the way I'm applying it and what I'm going for, I'm doing it real jabby-like so it creates little peaks. Not jamming and dragging it because then it'll cause streaks now if you want streaks that's a way that you can add them like if say a tree branch scraped across some mud or something like that that's a way of doing it is just by streaking it so now that i've got that on there like that i'm going to let this dry really good and it's going to dry really flat okay and we'll see what kind of uh see what kind of look and texture we've got going there all right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to get these tracks um, while this mud stuff is uh, drying. I need to uh, I need to start weathering these tracks because I need to get this spare track put on the front before I can weather the front of the vehicle. So I'm going to pop these off, hopefully. Without destroying them. Yeah. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some uh, what you call a dark wash on there. Then I'm going to do some rust wash, and then uh, once that stuff dries, I'll do a nice bit of dust work on it. 
So for this dark wash, I'm going to use, it's dark brown wash for green vehicles, but I'm not concerned about the for green vehicles part. It's just a dark brown wash is, that's what I want. So I'm using my special Master's Touch Fine Art Studio script ultra special double whammy wash brush and this is just to get the gray knocked down from being so gray. So we got that. Uh, let's see. So while that piece of track is drying, I'm going to start doing some wash. And I'm using uh, enamel wash, enamel by Meg, uh, brown for dark yellow vehicles. And it's a little bit lighter brown than that other color. That's why I'm using this one. <clears throat> Basically, I'm just going to go around and do a uh, pin wash. And yes, that's what it's called, a pin wash. I'm not using a pin, but it is known as a pin wash. And if you say pin wash, people will know exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, that's just a little aside there. From what I've uh, heard and seen, it does seem to be a source of contention like everything else on the social medias that it's not a pin wash because you're not using a pin. But, you know, you do it and you call it a pin wash, everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. So, that's free. We'll charge you for that one. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, again, I'm not going to do all of this on camera because I'll put you to sleep even quicker than usual. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on off camera. And hopefully by the time I get back to the next little segment, the tracks will be uh, ready for some rust tones. Another quick note as I do this here, pin wash. Um, if you watched the earlier episodes, I talked a little bit about one of the things I like to do with molded on hatches and such um, in order to make them look a little bit better without having to completely replace them is undercutting the edge with a scriber to where you have a nice uh, seam between the hatch and the surface sits on and this is where it really helps because when you put the wash on it pulls through there really well without just bleeding out in the surrounding area it's got a nice defined trench if you will to follow so you get a nice defined edge all around that molded on detail so just that real quick and I'll continue on <clears throat> all right the next thing I'm doing here is uh, I'm toning this down with some Vallejo pigment light sienna and the reason I'm doing that is because you can see here it's really overly bright for what I want. So I'm covering over it and I should get a little bit of blending going on. But it's also got kind of a pinkish cast to it and I don't want that. It may be correct for Tunisian desert, but I don't like it. So I am toning it down with this light sienna. Now what I'm doing though with this light sienna is I'm thinning it more with the pigment binder 
to where it's more like really thick paint than a paste. And I'm also getting it on the um, return rollers because in the uh, reference photos I have, the wheels are pretty dirty. I'm going to be doing some more work on the rubber part, but for now, I'm just going to get it all lathered up with this here uh, light sienna stuff. And since it's thinner, I'm going to go ahead and go up further up underneath the fenders. I'm just stippling it on top of the desert sand or, or desert dust, I mean. So. It's toning it down quite a bit. Already did it underneath here. I'm not going to go up the front yet because I still have to put the tracks on. But I'll do that in a little bit. But right now, I'm going to get it all up here where I put the desert dust. Now I need to let that dry and it looks kind of greenish brown right now but I've used this particular stuff quite a bit before I mean it's my it's actually my favorite of the uh, pigment colors um, it will dry quite a bit lighter so it'll look more uh, dry than wet this right here looks kind of wet When it dries, it'll look dustier and dirtier. All right, so we'll let that dry up for a while. <clears throat> all right, while well, all this stuff is drying, I need to get this glued onto the front of this. So I have to be careful, make sure I get it lined up right. And that this fits over it. I had to do it off camera but there it is so that looks pretty good so now I just need to glue it somehow uh, it's smearing glue everywhere so I think what I'll do is I think I will take these mm, that's like right on I don't want to take a chance of it being out of alignment so what I'm going to do so I'm just going to take some super glue ultra or Loctite super glue ultra liquid control and put some in here like thusly and hopefully I can get it to wick underneath the tracks and hold it in place. So let's take some of this, hold that in place. Now 
Now if I get some of this super glue on here and it's all shiny, it's no big deal because it's going to have a lot of mud on it. So it should be fine. So now I need to let that dry a little bit. <clears throat> okay, here's what's been going on. So as I often say, and probably only two or three of you will even hear this that have made it this far in the series, let alone this video. Um, weathering is where the videos fall apart because it's never, it's never a same, same kind of thing. I don't do the same thing every time from build to build and it can get kind of chaotic. So I often choose to not show what I'm doing. I've shown a little bit, but I'll explain what I've done so far so you have an idea of what my thought process is. So the first thing I did was using um, desert dust and pigment binder, I created a paste. This I showed you. Basically put it all over in there, let it dry. This side, the other side, the front and the back, underneath portions. So once I did that, um, for one, the color would had a little bit of a pinkish cast to it and just wasn't, and it was way too light for what I wanted. So the next thing I did was I took some dark earth and sprinkled that on there and then using a wilder brand, uh, fixer, pigment fixer, any brand will do or whatever you like to use for it. And I just pretty much soaked the whole thing. And that toned it down quite a bit, got a little bit darker, but a little bit darker than I wanted. And I wanted more depth and texture, so I decided to go with a third color. And that was, um, where is it? Light Sienna. So I got Light Sienna and I did the same thing again. I sprinkled it on there used the fixer and that toned it down a little bit so it was looking a lot better so the final thing i wanted to do though to just give it a little bit more dusty appearance was i got the um this light dust which is more of a gray dust and i just lightly sprinkled it on there and then i used this brush right here and just worked it all in boom 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 to where there weren't any clumps and this is what i ended up with and this is pretty much what I was looking for for underneath these edges. Now I'm going to have the same color combinations with maybe a little bit more dust on the upper surfaces as dust settles from driving around in a dry environment. But the um, the photos I have, it clearly shows a lot of mud down low. You can see it all stuck in these, these hubs here, uh, piled up on the running gear so I think that worked out really well okay the upper surfaces they're gonna be dirty but it's not gonna be like thick mud like this um, so anyway I think I've accomplished what I want to accomplish underneath here so I'm gonna do the same thing that I just need to put the the dust on here you know as a matter of fact I think I'll just show you what I did it's really quick and uh, it'll give you a good idea what I was going for so I took my dry pigment brush clearly labeled so I just got some on here like this and then just tapping the end of the brush I'm not real concerned about consistency because I want it to be somewhat random okay and that's about how much I put on there knock the rest back in the jar put the lid on the jar so I don't accidentally knock it over like I've almost done a number of times then I take this modified brush here um, it looked like I don't think I have any it looked like this anymore uh, but it was a kind of a long full brush and I chopped it off made it all stubby for doing this stipply type stuff then I just went in like this and worked it all in as you can see it creates a bit of a dusty appearance and 
the the colors are not so homogenous blow the loose stuff off boom there you go so that's what i was shooting for it worked out i'm stoked so now i can move on to putting the running gear on and i'm going to save the tracks uh just due to the fragility of them i don't want to break them or anything so i'm going to put on all the running gear except for well i'll probably go ahead and put these on and then just uh do the weathering and then i'll pull them back off till i'm ready to actually install the tracks all right <clears throat> so real quick like before i start working on the uh road wheels and such i want to get some color on the tracks so for that i'm going to use this uh, ultimate weathering wash sand now it's a little bit different color but once it's wiped off it leaves a decent uh, bit of dusty appearance behind um, I'll you know show how I wipe it off and all that stuff here in a little bit but right now I just want to get it spread on here basically just going right down the line and the outside edges of the tracks if you've never used clay based washes <clears throat> They're kind of cool because they're good for some things. They're not good for everything. I've used them in a lot of different ways, and I've kind of narrowed down uh, the ways I do like to use them. I used to use it as a lazy method for weathering, and it's just, it can help, but it doesn't take the place of some things. So I'm basically going to do this to both tracks then I will come back and show you how it wipes off as I was saying these clay based washes they are really good they're really good for leaving um, when you wipe them off a residue in recessed detail so it, it simulates dusty buildup really well you can do other things as well but that's one of the things I really like to use it for you don't have to worry about it being all even looking or anything like that because, like I said, most of it is going to come back off. So I'm going to go ahead and do this other track, let it dry up really good, then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do. Okay, um, another thing I need to do is, as you can see on my handy reference photos here, we've got some... Uh, as is typical on these kind of vehicles the guide horns will rub the paint off of the edge of the rims the wheels and you can kind of see that here even here and here but it's not really super shiny so it's like it's been rubbed off but then other stuff's been slung on top of it so before I do more weathering on the wheels I need to simulate that worn metal and for that i'm just using this it's a uh, graphite pencil 4b doesn't really matter but and i'm just rubbing it on the contact surfaces there and then when i do the weathering on the wheels If I'm getting some on the rims there, you can see, but it's going to be covered up by the weathering, so it'll be all right. It's just kind of hard to control. I do the wet, that's there, you can some on the tire portion there, rubber portion. But um, that way, when I do the weathering, it'll cover that up somewhat. Oh, man. And it'll appear to be under the weathering. Well, it will be under the weathering. I need to do it on these wheels and I need to do it on the edge of the and the surface of the uh, um, 
idler and the teeth of the drive sprockets. Then once I get the tracks on and I get those weathered, I'll be doing that on the contact patch of, e of each track pad, at least the ones that are visible. But that is what I'm going to work on right now. And we'll come back, start doing some weathering on these wheels. Okay, <clears throat> I've got the mud and such on the wheels. Um, it just has to dry really well. Then I can go through and treat it just like I did everything else with uh, some other colors <clears throat> and then scrub some dry pigments into it. But right now what I'm going to do is I've already started on the um, exhaust. So what I'm going to do next, I, I put a, a base coat of Rust, the uh, Ultimate Weathering Wash, clay-based wash Rust, and that's dried. So now I'm going to use some Vallejo Dark Brown, which is a water-based. Um, It's a water-based wash, and I'm just going to hit that around the edges. So I got to find my brush that I want to use. Uh, okay, I'm going to use this one here. And basically I'm just I'm gonna kind of splotchy it on there because I want to get some differentiation in the the surface of it the clay wash is there to act to act as a it's going to soak it in and hold it in place as opposed to it flowing everywhere or or uh oh crikey i can't think of the phrase i won't get any tide marks because this is a is a water-based acrylic so i'm gonna let that dry a little bit then i'll splotch it up with some uh rust and light rust kind of change the tones up a little bit before I get too far I need to glue this back here because that is where the spare wheel was mounted on this particular vehicle so I'm going to, get some, I'm going to use some gel super glue for this And then once I get it glued in place, and uh, before I get you know way too far gone, I need to make a little uh, mounting plate. It's like a square plate with a bolt holding it into that. So I'll have to do that. Right now I'm going to let that dry. All right, so this is where things get. Not quite so cohesive. I'm going to be jumping from thing to thing. So what I've done first is I have using Abtailung 502 Dark Mud. I just put some dots of it hither and thither. And with this dark oil, I'm going to be focusing mainly on 
like corners, deep corners, hidden corners, like right here, this is going to be partially obscured by the turret. So I uh, got a little bit much there, so I'm just going to use this. And, there we go. Like that. I'm going to go all around where this turret's going to be. So I want it to be a little more darker and shadowier and splotchy looking. Like that. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing along here, a little bit here, not quite as much, um, along these edges here, along in here, just anywhere where there's like more, it's more shadowy and dark, if that makes any sense. Just using a toothpick slash cocktail stick, whatever tarnation you want to call it, to do along those edges like that. So let's see what that looks like. And the brush I'm using is this type here. I can't remember what it's called. I just went blank. Now this isn't the only color that I'm going to be using to do this kind of stuff. I'm going to be using other colors and it's going to really break up the Got to be careful though I don't knock off any of these any of these uh, photo edge parts Okay, that's, that's, man, that's already looking better. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to break up the evenness. Even though I've got a couple of colors going on on this, this paint job, I want to, um, I want to further get it all messed up. Now, Again, I'm just trying to add just a little bit. I don't want to get too much. I don't want to get it too dark. The nice thing about these Abtiloon oils is a lot of times you'll see people, you know, putting their oils on cardboard to leach out some of the some of the linseed oil so it's you know a little easier to use not as necessary with this stuff it doesn't separate as much and uh, it's pretty much ready to use right out of the tube and just using a little bit of the residual tone down these markings a bit and those are going to get more toning down with other colors but right now I'll just use what I've got on my brush all right so let's let that sit for a minute all right next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is using uh MIG ammo light dust nature effects I'm going to be putting some dust deposits as you can see I've already done some on the uh, front of the hull here and again I'm going to use that to build up in the edges corners anywhere where dust would settle I'm just going to wipe it on there a little bit and then I'm just going to uh, kind of 
kind of rub it in. I'm being real super careful here. So I put it in place like that. Then I just use this blending brush again. Just soften the edges a bit. Just to make it look like there's some dust going on. So hopefully when I get done it won't look stupid, but we shall see. I want to try and avoid tide marks because I don't want it to look like it's puddled up. So I'm going to do all the horizontal surfaces first. And then I'll come back and work on the uh, vertical surfaces. <clears throat> Alright, so something else I'm doing here. Um, I've already got the light dust applied and worked in. Now I'm using the edge of my knife and to simulate that little bit of bare metal showing through I'm just lightly scraping off this uh, pigment and all the other stuff so we get that little bit of little bit of bare metal showing through there all right well wow, I'm pretty stoked with that so I'll do the same thing to the other side then we'll come back and I'll talk about how I've been treating these uh, the rubber part all right so another thing I've done is I made a mixture of um, light sienna and light dust and did a little bit of accumulation you may not be able to see it very good on the camera but uh, did some accumulation of crud in corners and stuff along this edge here and here I may add a little bit more some right there some right there I may add more but that's enough for now until I get the tracks and all that kind of stuff on but uh, I'm pretty stoked with it so far so the next thing I need to do is I need to do some weathering on the turret so basically I'm going to be doing the same exact thing on the turret that I did on the hull. Just uh, maybe not quite as heavy, but we'll see. <clears throat> Alright. Next thing I'm going to do is I need to get these tracks dirtied up a bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some of this light dust. And I'm just going to work it into the tracks on the ground surface. just to get some dirtiness going on I'm not being too concerned about getting it like a hundred percent coverage because I want it to be somewhat you know uneven and splotchy so I'm gonna work this in here like this fixer start in the middle up here where you can actually see it just start going through and fixing that stuff on there then we'll let it dry see what happens all right as you can see here um <laughs> This thing's pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video, which is part number eight of the Tamiya 135th scale Panzer II in U.S. capture markings. So uh, you're getting a little bit of a look at the final thing here, but I'm going to do one more video uh, that's going to be a wrap-up and a slideshow, and I'll talk about the figures and what I'm going to do with those. But uh, that's it for now. So if you enjoyed this, uh, I'll put a link at the end um, for the tracks again in case you missed uh, missed that video and didn't see the links in the other videos. Uh, I'll put a link to the tracks because those did play prominently in this. And uh, I'll give my thoughts on those in the final video as well. So 
As always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. If you like this, hit the subscribe button or hit the like button or whatever. I'd appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. So until next time, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.